A reading from St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning to read at verse 42. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Who then is the faithful and wise slave, whom his master has put in charge of his household, to give the other slaves their allowance of food at the proper time? Blessed is that slave whom his master will find at work when he arrives. I wonder what you felt when you first heard the government's plan to change the stay-at-home message that had guided us through the first part of lockdown with the new instruction to stay alert. I'm afraid my family, who can be a cynical bunch, took to the WhatsApp airwaves with a flurry of ridiculous selfies of stay-alert faces, or in the case of my brother, a photo of him scanning the horizon from his window with a pair of binoculars as if on lookout for an attacking herd of marauders about to hail into view. This was followed by quite a few images of those failing to heed the message, a brother-in-law fast asleep in an armchair, and my daughter's dog Barney curled up on his bed without a care in the world. I have to confess I was a bit mystified by it too. Stay at home was at least crystal clear. Stay alert? Well, what did that actually mean? I think the wave of ridicule with which the change was greeted was actually an indication of the tension and anxiety that was swirling around, both in the run-up to the announcement about the gradual easing of lockdown and in the days after when more detail was coming out. So then we had to get our heads round what we could or could not do, what was being planned for the future and how it could all go into reverse anyway if the data began to show infections or the magic R rating on the rise. It was always going to be much more complex to emerge from such a strict lockdown than to go into it, given the multitude of scenarios. The desire to reduce risk to a minimum is never going to sit very well with the need to get the economy and education in school back on some sort of track. I have to say that over the past week my own lockdown life has shifted a little with a couple of extra outings where it did require that I thought things through and worked out the safest way to proceed, where I did need extra care to keep social distance and to remain alert to other people's needs as well as my own. It didn't seem such a bad slogan when I began to work with it. And the fact that the virus is hidden and difficult to pin down does require that we all do indeed stay alert and do the very best we can to stop its path. Be on the alert is very much the focus of Jesus' teaching in our Gospel passage for today. Keep wake, awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. It's the sort of passage we hear in the Advent season with its focus on the second coming, the time when Christ will appear again. Since nobody knows when that time will be, it is important to be ready. Others interpret the same message as referring to the time when each of us depart this world and die, and the need to be prepared for that great step into the unknown, whenever it is asked of us. How would the passage have been read by Matthew's first audience? To them it would have referred to the great crisis that was going to sweep over Jerusalem and the surrounding region at some at then unknown date. It did finally occur in AD 70 at the height of the war between Rome and Judea, when Jerusalem was ransacked and the temple destroyed. The anticipation of this disaster with the threat of lives and families and communities being devastated was linked in the thinking of the time with the coming of the Son of Man for the final day of reckoning. Jesus has been explaining that no one knows when this time will be and that life will go on as normal right up to the last minute. He doesn't minimise the scary consequences of what will happen, but is at pains to impress upon his disciples the need to stay awake, to be ready, as if at any time a surprise visitor might come knocking at the door, 
or breaking in like a thief in the night. The way to be prepared, Jesus goes on to say, is to carry on life day by day as a good and faithful servant would, to take our responsibilities for others seriously, to be trustworthy and hardworking. Jesus is speaking to his disciples whom he will have to leave and it will be their responsibility to carry the good news to the world and support and nurture the emerging communities of Christians. Their watchfulness, their readiness, their faithfulness are going to be tested to the full. But as we know, and as we will celebrate at Pentecost, the gift of the Holy Spirit would be poured out upon them, and they would be given all the needful gifts to carry out that task. Now, of course, in terms of the gradual easing of lockdown, with all its twists and turns and ups and downs, and in all the different ways each of us is having to think through our own circumstances and what we need to do for those in our care, staying alert and taking note of the guidance we are given is going to be key. In terms of our faith, well, watchfulness and faithfulness, staying alert and staying true to the gospel of Christ, being ready to recognise and respond to him whenever and however he comes, that seems as good guidance for these times as for any time. As we prepare to rejoice in the outpouring of the gift of the Holy Spirit and to celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our communities, let us pray for the needful gifts of his grace day by day to be faithful and true followers of the way of Christ. May God bless you and keep you all. Amen.